thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, hello everybody. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I was a bit unsure what to do tonight. So I was going to share my own personal um, story and my own personal presentation. However, I thought I would share with you the support that we at the LA offer. And one of the reasons why I'm quite pleased that I haven't shared my own personal presentation is because Mike, mine is quite similar to yours. That's Mike Davies. So um, yeah, I'll give you a little bit of info about myself. So um, you know, my name is Tracy Ralph. And back in 2014, on Christmas Eve, I felt really ill. Um, I'm a mother. I've got two young boys. Um, my youngest son was 16 months at the time and my eldest was four. And I felt a bit like you probably did, Mike. I just felt really, really unwell. Um, I've cut the story really short because I wasn't going into too much detail. I actually, turns out, I had pneumonia, but I actually had sepsis. Um, and I deteriorated at a really alarming rate. Um, I was put into an induced coma all on Christmas Eve, and then I got transferred up to St. Thomas's. And I was put onto a machine called an ECMO machine, which is basically the last chance of survival. It allows your heart and lungs to rest. Um, and I was put onto that machine, and consequently, a bit like you, Mike, I was unaware of anything that was going on. I was you know, my family, my children, they was all said to say goodbye to me. It was a really awful time. I have no recollection of this at all. Um, obviously, I was in the coma, but beforehand, I actually called the doctors. I was at the hospital. I was still conscious. I don't know anything from that day on Christmas Eve. Um, but as a result of that, um, after being in um, St. Thomas's, I actually got transferred to Roehampton, like you, Mike. Um, so that story that you were showing, all of being at Roehampton, it just brought it all back for me as well. So, um, yeah, I'm so pleased I've not shared my story because I was on that little ball that you was on as well. So it was quite nice to see your photos because I was thinking I remember it there. So, um, yes, consequently, as a result of contracting um, sepsis, I um, am a baloney amputee. But I'm rather fortunate that I do still have my hands. Um, I just am, an, I've just lost my fingers. I'm fortunate enough that I do still have my thumbs. But I'm a, bi a bilateral amputee like you, Mike. Um, and yes, so, so psychological help that I did receive when I was in Roehampton, I did see a really amazing therapist whilst I was in Roehampton. She was incredible. Um, I do not know where I would be without her. Um, and then Going from on from there, I did get psychological help from my local GP. I did get in contact with my GP and I did get lots of psychological help. Not necessarily coming to terms with my amputation. It's really funny. It was just other ways. I learned how to rechange my mind process, my thought process with cognitive behavioural therapy. And um, since being at Roehampton, I've now changed prosthetic centres to one closer to myself. Um, which is one, well, it was Heldwood, they've now just moved centres to Billericay, which is outskirts of London, like Essex. So with going to that prosthetic centre there, if you're at a prosthetic centre, you are usually offered help from a psychological therapist or a counsellor that they may have at the centre. So that's what I took on board. Um, and I joined a mindfulness group with a psychological therapist there, Kim. And it's so been talking with lots of other amputees that really does help, it really did help. But what also helped me um, was reaching out and getting in touch with obviously like yourselves, an organisation like yourselves. But I actually made contact with the Limbless Association because they're a charity for amputees, um, a really good organisation that helps support amputees and they offer so much support and advice. If I can share my screen, it might be easy if I share the offer and support that, that we do because I volunteered with the Limbless Association for about 18 months um, and now I'm an employee um, for the um, Limbless Association. I'm actually now the South East Essex Hub Development Officer and I, we support lots of amputees. If I can share my screen, let me see if I can share that. Don't know if you can, can you see that? I don't know if anyone can see my screen. Could you see that, Kat? I don't know if you could see the... No, we can't see anything at the moment. Can't see anything. Sorry, I was, I was muted. No, can't see anything at the moment. Hold on, let me see if I can share it now. Hold on. Oh, let me get back to there. Why is it not sharing? 
It's the wonders of live TV, Tracy. Oh, gosh, I do this all the time. You would if you would believe it or not. There you go. Can you see it? Yeah. Mm, what slide are we on, though? Hold, sorry. It's all right. If you're, are you on the um, Luminous Association, the project, Connect Outreach project. Yeah, that's it. That's where I need to be. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Okay, Just make sure. So, yeah, since becoming an amputee, obviously, I've reached out and I help support. I help set up our first support and connect hub. Um, and we actually now, this is all of us here, what our um, Support and Connect Hub do, we do them in our local prosthetic centres. So we have one in Essex, Hull, Bristol and Manchester. And we're looking to reach out in, in many of the prosthetic centres across the UK. Um, and this is a next slide here is one that we've done. So this is lots of other amputees. It doesn't matter what level of amputation you have, whether you're, you're a prosthetic user, whether or not you're in wheelchairs, or whether or not um, you're a private patient, or whether or not, whatever, however you've obtained your amputation, we're there just to support. We found that being with their prosthetic centres and in a safe and secure environment, everybody becomes less isolated. Because as an amputee, I know myself in the first first few months, couple of years, you can feel really isolated. And by setting up these groups that we found, by talking to another amputee who's who's gone through the same life experience as yourself, nothing's better. Obviously, you do need your clinical support and the clinical psychologists and, and the counsellors, but something really is important. And there's just the understanding of speaking to another amputee. And um, so we found that that really does help. And this is just a few of our other um, hub coordinators. And um, we've got Clifton, who is our national outreach um, um, development officer. And these are our other um, officers as well who like, offer support across the UK. And when I was in my local prosthetic centre, we um, had a mindfulness group. And this is me here with some of the people um, with other amputees where we'd all just get together and just offer each other support. I've, I found that so beneficial just to talk to other amputees who've gone through the similar experience. Um, and just here, I'll just like show you this one as well. And recently, due to the pandemic, I don't know about yourselves, that we've found that everybody's even more so isolated. So we've taken to doing things like on this platform, like yourselves, how you've, you've done it. So we do now weekly um, support and connect hubs via, um, via Zoom. And we offer two a month of virtually speaking events where we may have a trained um, psychological therapist, um, a prosthetist. It's, it all depends. Anything to do with, um, with limb loss, really. with a professional speaker talking and then just a bit like yourself, like what you're doing on this platform. We have chance for Q&A after. And we found that by doing this, it's really helped our members just become more inclusive. And we've built up a little community and we have so many other things to offer where we give practical support with them, benefits, advice. And I've just found with myself, um, I'll stop sharing it now so you can see me. That's it. Um, I've just found with myself, just being part of a community and part of a group, it's just really, really helped me in my own psychological um, experience really just by talking to other people um, and I'm part we also do have it's a volunteer visitor scheme where we talk to amputees both pre and post amputation and to offer support for them whether or not it be via telephone via this platform and um, just because talking to somebody else is just a problem shared it's a problem half that's what I always do think um, and it just really does make a difference to talk to somebody who really understands um, whether or not you pick up the phone. And like what you said, Mike, um, I think it's really important that people reach out when the time's right for them. With myself, I knew I didn't want to pick up the phone and talk to, um, say, the Limitless Association or any other charity out there. Um, I mean, I do lots of talks for the NHS now to make more awareness of the sepsis, because I think that's really important because people just aren't aware of the signs. Um, as there's lots of talks like that but it's really important just to talk when you're ready um, because like Mike you said and I'm really firm believer of this like once you've you grieved you have to grieve for the loss of your limb because um, you do you grieve for the loss of your limb you really really do I um, mean it's all about acceptance and it's learning about the correct coping strategies 
and that really does help and it's just it takes a really strong person to reach out and I just think there's so many organizations whether or not it be yourselves um, or you can reach out to us because there's already always somebody at the end of the line to help um, and it's just about building the strength to talk to somebody and if not just contact your local GP go to your prosthetic center um, anybody and there's always somebody there at the end of the line to help including us and yourself so thank you guys and I'll be around to answer any questions I do ramble on a little bit so sorry if I don't talk so clearly but that that is just me I do tend to ramble on but I thought we could ask some questions at the Q&A so thank you all for listening to me thank you ever so much Tracy we love a rambler don't worry it's absolutely fine you were you were you were really interesting and um I, I, I do want to say just to add on to that um that um we work really closely with associations like yours um, and people that um, come through to us. You know, I, I manage the support services, so um, it, 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 it takes a long time, like you said, sometimes for people to actually pick up the phone and be able to talk to people. Um, and this is why events like this are so um, uh, uh, kind of useful because, you know, I, I break down who I am now. People know that they can talk to me, but it's, you know, seeing a picture on, on, on you know, here's our team. It's not always easy to pick up the phone and say hello to somebody I'm struggling. Where can I get this advice? So, and I have actually um, uh, over the past few years been on and off of your website um, and and the support that um, that you guys provide, you know, um, kind of talking about, um, you know, accessing benefits and things like that. Um, so it's, it's a two way thing for people that come to us and I, and I feel that uh, you know they can um, benefit from from your advice and um, then you know we kind of we, we will always point them in your direction and vice versa I'm sure so um, thank you so much Tracy for um, for that I'm sure that people will um, you know really have somewhere to turn to now if, if they, you know if they needed to so thank you. Thank you Kat can I just say that it's also free membership so we do have a new website and you can join up for free membership there or I'll put my um, address my email address in the chat so you can always contact me direct and we do have quarterly magazines with lots of advice in as well so that's available just wanted to point that out.